What's going on, Grizz Nation? It's Michael Wallace, Eric Hasseltine, and the off-season outlook continues. I'm here to talk with Eric about Grizzlies bigs. Okay. Right? Bigs. And that starts with, it gets no bigger than Jonas Valanciunas, Jaron Jackson Jr., right. our two frontline bigs. We saw an encouraging finish to the season with how those guys play. Jonas has done it all year long. But when you go back and look at the trajectory that our bigs have been on this season, what stands out about it the most? Well, I think you first start with Jonas Valanciunas and his rebounding. It was a, a career year rebounding the basketball, career year for double-doubles. He was just a machine night in, night out, giving you 16, 17, 18 points, 10, 12, 13, 14 rebounds, especially after the All-Star break. So his rebounding really went on an uptick. I think sometimes Jonas's defense because of his struggles in the pick and roll does not get a lot of attention on the positive side. I thought he protected the rim really well towards the end of the year. Now with Jaron, obviously there's a lot of questions that left uh, on the table because of the lack of time he was out on the floor. Now with Jaron Jackson Jr., you have phenomenal talent, phenomenal size, just things that you can't teach guys. Now he's got to ramp it up to get that killer instinct, that killer instinct to go get defensive rebounds, to go get offensive rebounds, to block shots, but do it aggressively without committing cheap fouls. And that's just part of the maturation process. And I'm sure mentally this was a very difficult year for Jaron Jackson Jr. He's a young guy, couldn't play, wanted to play, finally gets out on the court. You realize, hey, you can't just hit the ground running in the NBA. There's a lot to ramping it back up to get to the level you want to play at. So those two guys are obviously the biggest keys moving forward because they're your starting four and your starting five. And when you put them on the floor together, if you can find a way to defend that high pick and roll with those two guys out there, you can really pose some matchup problems on the other end of the floor for your opposition. There's some upside there tremendously with those two guys. And there's also some things that need to be addressed this offseason that the fit, as you talked sure. about defensively, what kind of metrics and matrix are we going to see from those two guys? But then when you look the next step, coming off the bench. You got two guys right there. Xavier Tillman had a phenomenal rookie year, proved that he was physically uh, ready to play at the NBA level. And then Brandon Clark had an up and down year coming off of his uh, spectacular rookie year. So when you look at the next two guys coming off the bench uh, with the Grizzlies in the big rotation, what did you see from them this year? Well, I think let's start with Xavier. It was a really pleasant surprise because you didn't know what you were getting. He was called an undersized four. He's not super athletic. He's not super quick, but he's tough as nails. And he really did seem to grasp the NBA game a lot faster than usually rookies do. You called them throughout the season. Uh, they're not rookies. They're first year first vets. Year vets. First year so, vets. <laughs> I thought Tillman's confidence was really impressive. He played the game like he knew he belonged. He took shots in big moments. Even if they didn't go in, it didn't affect him that way. I thought he really figured out a good way to play that high pick and roll defense as an undersized big where he could kind of take some looks away from opposing players. And he's just got a motor and, and he seems to really enjoy the game, seems to have a great rapport with his teammates. So it was a pleasant surprise that a second round pick can come in and be that productive, especially in a situation where the Grizzlies needed him. For Brandon Clark, it was a bit of an enigma because he had such a great rookie season and then had nights where he looked like the Brandon Clark from last year and then had other nights where he looked like he really questioned a little bit what his role maybe would be or whether or not he he should be taking shots or not taking shots. There were nights where he got into those Brandon Clark rhythms and you look up, he's six for seven, he's got seven, eight rebounds, he's blocked two or three shots. And then there were nights where he took one or two shots. So he's got to find that level of consistency. They always talk about a rookie taking that next step in your second year. I don't know that Brandon took as big a step as he would have liked. I don't want to speak for the young man. He's a tremendous teammate. His, his players, you know, his players in his locker room all love him. There's no doubt about that. But you've got to figure out what you're going to be. Are you going to be a capable three-point shooter on the perimeter that can stretch the defense? Or are you going to be a slasher that really very few guys in this league can block that little running floater he takes right. because of his ability to rise above the rim? Either way, I think if you asked him, he would say it was a tad disappointing on this year. And I would expect him to put in a ton of work this offseason to kind of take it back towards what we saw his rookie year as opposed to what we saw this season. The good thing about it, though, is that this is all a good problem to have. Yes. You talk about the depth that Taylor Jenkins and his front office looks at when they look at the big position. Uh, there are multiple different guys that can play. All of them got experience this season, and we'll see where it goes from here. For Eric Hasseltine, I'm Michael Wallace. That was your look at the bigs and our offseason outlook. Keep it locked on all of our Grind City Media content at Grizzlies.com.